welcome back. In this video, we're going to walk through revenue as a classification in the chart of accounts. And we're going to talk through exactly how this classification, called revenue, actually drives debit and credit behavior. Let's get started. In the last video on the set of books, I described that the chart of accounts is what drives behavior in debits and credits. And the reason for this is because every account that we set up has to be given a uh, type or a category uh, that it is assigned to. So for example, if we have a, uh, an expense account, it's going to be classified as an expense. If we have a revenue account, it will be classified as revenue. So in this video, we're going to go through revenue accounts, that classification, and how this drives behavior of debits and credits. Within revenue, you can have hundreds, if not thousands, of different revenue accounts. And you'll see a little bit later how you can break up your revenue into different kinds of revenue streams or different locations or whatever makes sense for your business. An important thing to note is that any revenue account assigned to the revenue category or classification, revenue is always, always, always on the income statement. That's where it will end up when we do financial statement preparation later on. Another important thing to note here is that the income statement and P&L or profit and loss statement, they're synonymous. They are saying the same thing. Revenue as a definition is income received in exchange for goods or services. What's really important here is that we're actually giving a product to the customer or giving a service to the customer. Only when we do that are we actually recognizing revenue. And I will talk about this later on, but there is a lot of companies today use gift cards and gift cards are not revenue not at the time the gift card is bought but I will go into that in a lot more detail in a later video so what are the triggers to revenue well every company has to make sales on merchandise services or both that's why we're in business we are in business to make sales a company may or may not receive cash at the time of sale and you've, you've done this a million times yourself. You've gone out and you've bought something and you bought it on a credit card. Well, the company, until, until which time the credit card company actually sends the cash, that is um, a revenue, but it's an accounts receivable on the other end. And I will show examples of this later on of exactly how this works. Um, at the same time, a company may sell you something on credit terms, meaning that you can pay it uh, 30 days from now or 45 days from now and therefore uh, until the that cash actually comes in they don't have the cash yet and again those gift cards those gift cards are a, a unique situation in the world of revenue and when we sell a gift card to somebody it's a promise to provide goods or services in the future so that actual gift card sale is not a revenue producing event. So here's an example. I'm going to go through several examples and you're going to see that these all look very much the same. So we have a store one revenue account. We classify it as revenue. When we add to this account, we're crediting that account. So anytime we have a sale, we're going to credit that account because we are adding to our revenue. The only time that we make any kind of adjustments, we can make adjustments to sales for various different reasons. We can have discounts on sales. Uh, we can have you know other kinds of things that hit there, but we have uh, adjustments where maybe there's been an accounting error or something like that. And the only time that this is actually closed out is at the end of the month. And at the end of the month, we will make a closing entry that will subtract from this account and actually clear it out. And I will go over closing entries later on in another video but the important thing here to note is that anytime we have a sale, we are crediting revenue 
and that means we're adding to it. Another important piece here is that the ending balance must equal a credit. So at the end of an accounting period, we should have more credit dollars in that revenue account than we have debit dollars. And the system, the, the actual software, is going to add this up for us. And it's going to take all these uh, credit entries, and it's going to take whatever debit entries are in there, and it's going to come up with what is the grand total amount. That amount should be a credit. That ending balance, you will also hear it called a normal balance, and that's how I may speak to it in future videos. But remember, if you see a revenue account and it has a debit balance at the end of a month, then there's a serious problem somewhere. Therefore, increases to revenue, we will credit the account, and we want to decrease our revenue, we will debit it. You can see on the next example, store to revenue, it all works the exact same way. That's why I'm saying that regardless of the revenue account, they all behave the same way. And so as you can see here, very is exactly the same as the one prior to it. Another example, services revenue works exactly the same way when we want to add to if we make a sale on our services revenue we are adding to that and we want to credit it and then finally it's just another example of the different kinds of revenue accounts that we can have a lot of companies will have not only product sales but maybe they uh, also merchandise maybe they allow people to license their product and sell it in their stores you know, there's all kinds of different revenue arrangements that can happen out there. And again, this works exactly the same as the other ones that I've shown you. So as a recap, our normal balance in any revenue account is going to be a credit. Credits come from the sale of goods and or services. Debits come from adjustments or allowances or discounts and closing entries. All revenue accounts behave in the same manner, and all revenue accounts go to the income statement, or in other words, the profit and loss statement, the P&L. Next, we're going to talk about expenses.